Well, good morning. It's Saturday morning and it's another beautiful day here. It's so nice to see the sunshine because I know that uh, real quick here it is going to be snowing and blowing and sleeting and I'll be missing days like today. But I just wanted to say hi. I hope that you have a truly blessed weekend and I hope you join me. During the next couple days, I'll be checking in with you and just kind of letting you know what's happening. Don't really have any big plans today. I do know I need to go and do a couple things because, yeah, I forgot to do a couple things. I was so proud of myself. I thought I remembered everything that I needed. and Nope, I didn't, so I'm going to have to take a quick trip to the store. But other than that, it's not real pressing. I mean, even if it waited until Monday, but I hate to do that. So, I hope you'll join me throughout my weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Well, we still have a few things to put away before the snow flies, like the grill and those chairs. So, my husband's moving things around in the shed now, and we're going to try to get some things put away so that we're, we're all set when the snow flies, because it's not fun to try to scramble and do everything once that happens. Yep, getting it all cleaned up inside of here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see much because I didn't bring out a flashlight. Is we're just put the grill in there and then we're going to put the lawnmower there and that should work. This little shed, let me tell you, when we first moved here, we did not have any money. So, what my, you know, left over and, but we needed a shed to store stuff. So, my husband was just collected up pieces of plywood and literally, this was free. All we had to pay was a couple two by fours and he just pieced it together and this is what we got. And we, it was only supposed to be temporary and here it is 10 years later and we're, we're still using it and it's still in really great shape. Yeah, it's not exactly the, the biggest shed in the world but it suits our needs. We have room for the lawnmower and the grill and his four-wheeler for plowing. He's trying to hold that up. There he goes. I knew that fit in there really good. Once um, we no longer had any goats, we used to store this um, use this I should say for the storage of hay and feed but then when we don't now that we don't have any goats after our last goat died um, we have been able to use it for all his needs and boy that's convenient well little little wind tossed came in because I needed to get mothballs for my husband yeah, we get mice that like to go up inside the engine of his um, lawnmower, and we've had had it repaired a couple times. He was told to put mothballs in there last year. We didn't have that problem, so we're going to put mothballs in again this year. And he needs a garbage bag, so I'm on my way back outside. Well, it's an absolutely beautiful day, and I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, but it is really dark that's facing north which is usually where our storms come from it comes down from the north so they say it's supposed to be a really good weekend so let's hope that that holds true because it is it is it is really pretty it's really a beautiful day the Sun is just really shining brightly thank you Lord well good morning it is Sunday morning and it is a glorious day here. The sun is shining so bright. It's just glistening on the, the tops of the tr leaves of the trees that are still on. It just glistening golds and oranges. It's very pretty. But anyways, I just wanted to say good morning. I wanted to check in with you and just let you know that um, I don't think that we have a whole lot of plans. Yesterday we had gone over to my oldest son's house. Um, Rick helped him take a few branches down um, with the chainsaw, so of some trees that were just really 
low limbs and they just really needed to get those off those trees but anyways that's what he did while well, I got to sit and chat with my daughter-in-law and she's such a sweetie but anyways um, today I'm not really sure what we're going to do I'm sure we'll think of something anyways I hope you join me for my day and I hope you have a good time at whatever church that you might go to and that above all we need to worship the Lord for he is good and I just can't even imagine taking my next breath without him being with me. So God bless, and I'll talk to you later today. Who's going to eat dinner? Who's going to eat dinner? Missy and Minnie going to eat dinner? Come on. Come on. Go to eat. Okay. Good puppies. Good puppies. Well, good evening. It is Sunday evening and it's turned into a difficult day for me. I um, had a wonderful morning. I had a wonderful day at our morning at worship service. And after church, we stopped over at this one person's house and they gave me a little bit of information that I was not expecting and it caused a, a great deal of disappointment within my heart and a little bit of confusion in my understanding and I came home and I just had a hard time thinking really of anything else. I just kind of dwelt on what I had been told. And I ended up calling the, the person that this was involved with and I really can't get into the depth of it, but, and we had a good talk, but I did not come away with a sense of relief or satisfaction, let's put it that way. And I ended up going to church tonight and I almost didn't. I almost, I, in fact, I even said to my husband, I said, I don't know if I'm gonna to go tonight. But then I realized that, well, that's not the answer, you know? I mean, if anything, that I need to go. So, um, but, Disappointment is a part of life, and when it comes our way, sometimes it's really just really hard to deal with it, especially when it involves people that you really care about and you love and that have or are a part of your life that you just, you can't even imagine life without them, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just really disappointed with some choices that this individual has decided to make and it's hard and I'm not going to pretend it's not hard and this is not the first time I've dealt with disappointment I've dealt with disappointment a lot in my life and there's I think a few things that I've it's taken me quite a few hours to get to this point but I think that I just wanted to say that no matter how disappointed we can be in other people, and how maybe they have broken our hearts in decisions that they make, we have to believe in God's plan and that he's a miracle worker and that if he could part the waters for the children of Israel and if he could heal the sick and raise people from the dead. And he can save us and give us a new heart and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then I just need to say that I choose to believe. 
I believe that God has even this in his hands. And I guess I just kind of got to leave it there. I mean, I, there's nothing else I can do. I look at the situation and I realize that there isn't anything that I can do to change the situation. I think it's natural to, when you're disappointed and your heart's been broke, to feel grief. And because our hopes and our expectations have kind of been just cut down, and you've kind of, kind of, you know, mourning over the way you had hoped things would be. I, I think that that's that's normal to, to be like to be there in that way. I'm making sense. I, I'm just honestly, I'm just talking top of my head, trying to as I speak to you, get things lined up in my own head and heart so that I can totally understand things, but. I think the other thing that we need to do is we need to pray. We need to just be honest with God and let him know how we're hurt, how we're disappointed, and how we really desire for him to intervene in the situation. And I think another thing we got to concentrate on is not to worry. Because I think that, especially us women, we're worriers. It's real easy for us to become worriers, you know, and not and worry about everything. And that's not going to do anything. And, you know, the Bible warns us not to do that. You know, we're not to worry about anything. That's what Philippians four seven says. There's my favorite book again, Philippians. The, you know, we're we're to, not to worry about anything. We're to pray about everything. Tell God our needs and thank Him for everything He's done. And that's how we are going to experience God's peace. And his peace is going to guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Christ. And that's a paraphrase of Philippians 4, uh, 6 and 7. But that's basically what it's saying. And then I guess we can just listen for God's answer and to wait with trust and believing that he, he, he's He's taking care of the situation. He is working it out according to his plan and his purpose for our own well-being. And, and leave it there. I mean, I mean that's what Psalm says. Psalms 27, 14 says that we're to wait patiently for the Lord to be brave and courageous. So, you know, that's kind of where we have to leave it. And Above all, I guess what we need to also remember is to praise the Lord. Again, in Psalms 118, 24, it, it, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And even though everything that's happening in the day is not something that we want to rejoice over, the fact that God made this day and we are part of God's family, we have reason of that alone to rejoice. So I'm sorry if my ramblings seemed a bit um, scattered. I guess I just, I just needed to think things through. So thanks for joining me. And again, let's remember life happens because it's happened to me today but I can still enjoy it because it is a day that God has made. Therefore, I will rejoice because he is good. He is good and I will praise his name. So God bless and I'll see you tomorrow.